All right, guys, welcome back. In the last video, we took a look at the GPO-1 real grade Zephyranthes kit. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at its counterpart, the uh, GPO-1 full burn-in version in uh, also real grade here, 144 scale. Now this one essentially is gonna be, of course, mostly the same kit. It's got some different shoulders, different backpack, different parts on the legs, and that's kind of really about it, I think. So I wish that this would have also come with a different weapon as well, like the different uh, bazooka or something would have been cool. But anyway, uh, the GPO-1 Zephyranthes was pretty cool. Let's go ahead and check out what the GPO-1 full burn-in, the FB version, is going to look like as well. Alright, so just like with the previous kit, this one is just very standard RG style box art here on the front with a little kind of uh, damage there on the, my box, no big deal. But you do gotta love the RG style box art, I really enjoy it. And then over here on the side, as I mentioned, this is number 13 in the line, so just straight after its younger brother. On the bottom of him here, once again, just that close-up image from the front of the box there. What the real grade frame is gonna look like on this, so there's the runner and then what the frame looks like all built up, including some backpack parts and then just a couple of other little, little bits of armor on there as well. Talking about the marking stickers, which we've got those of course, and then what the core fighter is gonna look like just on its own and then installed into the body. Over here, what the kit is gonna look like without any paint or anything, just straight out the box, stickers, and that's it. It does look pretty good. And on the top of the box, here's a look at some action poses, so flying there with the beam rifle, shooting the beam rifle, swinging the sword, standing there with his back to us, and then showing off some more other details there. So the regular kit was 2,500 yen, and this kit is also 2,500 yen. So kind of interesting, this is basically kind of like the same kit, plus some more parts there for the backpack. I would think that this version of the kit has more plastic included in here, but they still kept the same 2,500 yen price tag for that, so that's pretty cool. Inside here, once again, we've got uh, just some advertisements showing off the other different versions of the kit in different lines. So the perfect grade, the real grade, regular GPO one, and around over here, the SD version, the HD version, and the MG version. Once again, still holding out for an MG 2.0, but here is the manual, as well as a very old advertisement for Gundam Breaker in here, all right, and then all of our runners. And why does this for some reason seem like these runner bags are kind of different than usual? They're like a little bit more cloudy for some reason. I don't think it's because I've just had this kit for a long time, but that's kind of odd. Anyway, let's just go ahead and crack open the manual. On the front there, it's just a standard RG style manual uh, artwork there, just showing the face on the back is the guide where all the sticker markings are gonna go around on the mobile suits and on the core fighter and on the weapons and everything. Down here you got our paint guide. Once again, pretty standard colors for that. Yellow, blue, red, white, gray. And then our painting guide for the figure, the character figure as well in 144 scale. So that looks like a pretty cool one, I like that. Opening it up to the front, just a little bit of uh, tips, how to build it, and then our parts list over here. We are going to have, looks like, uh, one leftover part, and maybe that's kind of it, just two leftover parts, basically. One from the B runner and one from the i2 runner. All right, then we just get into the construction, but first off, there's a little section here with some more information all in Japanese and some more detailed photos, it's kind of the same stuff we saw on the outside of the box, essentially. So you build the core fighter and then all the rest of the kit here until we get to, well, here's a section about the verniers. So you got some more information about those, but once again, it's all still in Japanese. And then we should have a section like that for the weapons as well. Here they are. So pretty basic weapons, shield, beam saber, beam rifle, that's pretty much it. Like I said, I wish this would have come with the bazooka or something as well too, would have been nice, but you can't have everything. So there's our hand options, how to equip the weapons and everything, how to put it up on an action base, not included, and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's get into the runners. All right, so for the decal stickers here, it's definitely a little bit larger sheet than what we saw with the regular GP01. So you got a couple, a few more uh, added stickers on here that you'll have to use on the kit. Runner A here, once again, a four color runner with some clear at the top, yellow down here at the bottom, some dark gun metal over there on the side, and then some white throughout the center. And runner B is once again, our advanced MS joint number five there for the inner frame. And then runner C is another multicolor runner here with some red, blue, and then our clear pink beam saber effect parts up there. If you remember from the regular GPO one, it was like this half of the runner over here, and now instead of that half, it's this half of the runner over here. So it's kind of interesting how they laid out the runner here for runner C. Now we're skipping ahead here to runner F for our off-white parts for the armor. And then runner G is in some very dark gray ABS plastic. And again, for the original kit, we had this section over here, and it was just like the top half, but in this case we have the addition of this bottom half as well, minus this little section over there in the corner. So the runner H1 here, an entirely new runner specifically for this version of the kit. There is our pilot figure, and this is all just new armor parts in white. Then we do also have runner H2, which is a copy of this half of the runner here. 
And then we have Runner I1, which admittedly looks very similar to the Runner we had in the first kit, but it's just a little bit different. And this is once again in a very dark gray, gunmetal-y kind of color. And then we have a copy of this section of the Runner here for Runner I2. So there we have it, the souped up version of the GP01, looking pretty cool. The first one was nice, let's see how this one compares. All right, so once again, guys, we'll just start off by taking a look here at the core fighter on its own before we put it into the Gundam. It's a very cool looking core fighter. I've always liked the design of the core fighter here of the full burner with those big, massive engines on the side of there. It does look very cool, but I mean, once again, it's just like, uh, if you're gonna be buying this kit, you're probably gonna build this and like admire it once and then put it into the Gundam. You're not really ever probably going to ever have this on display unless you're the kind of person that wants to throw away over half the kit or leave half the kit unusable and then just have the core fighter on display. If you're a really big fan of this core fighter, then maybe that's the case. But let's go ahead and just put this into the Gundam then. And it's a pretty simple transformation. The first thing we need to do is just remove these bits of landing gear off the bottom of there. To turn these beam sabers around, lift this back part up, kind of lifts up just a little bit like that. You can pop these out to the side. We'll need to kind of bend those around, rotate those. There's also a little flap on the top of this blue part here. It's a little tricky. You might need a little tool to lift that up, but that flap will lift up. This whole section will bend down like that. The nose cone, you need to fold that and then fold that down. Oops, we forgot to take this hatch here on the bottom. This white one, you need to fold that one down as well and fold this nose cone down around there. There's a little latch up in there that will pop the kind of front and back half of them, just kind of pop those together like that. And just of course, we're gonna to want to point the beam sabers up and then this will fit up into the top half of the body here. Uh, that blue section on the top where we lift it up, that just tabs into here. And that, if you guys saw that little tiny yellow bit that fell off, that's going to be the biggest problem that I've noticed with this kit so far. See the yellow chest band there fell out and it's kind of meant to come out because those little thrusters in there are supposed to meant to like pop out of there for when he's doing his boosting. So you can, there's a little switch underneath there. You can slide that and those pop out to the front, which is a really cool gimmick. It's just that when you want to have those stuck in there, this chest band, especially just the one on the left side here keeps popping out on me. So probably going to happen a number of times over the course of this review. But anyway, so once you got the core fighter in there, then you just pop it onto the bottom half of the body. There's little tabs where this will just fit into place and it's pretty secure. So there we go, I've got that on there. And I will say it does feel slightly less secure than the Zephyranthes did. Uh, this one does feel a little bit more touchy. The Zephyranthes felt pretty solid to me. This one does feel a little bit more uh, touchy maybe. Maybe it's just because of that chest vent. But as you can see, I'm shaking it pretty well and only that chest vent is popping out. It's, the whole thing's still staying together pretty well, so I think it's pretty solid enough. As for the articulation, I won't go over that in this video because the articulation is going to be exactly the same as with the Zephyranthes. I covered that all in that video. Really, the only thing that's different are the, going to be the parts that are new. So we have new front skirt parts, which are larger here. The shoulders, of course, are larger. And these also have a little kind of gimmick here. There's a little switch on the top that you can slide out or you can just kind of slide out this uh, white part, just kind of grab onto this carefully and slide that out and it pops out those little verniers there on the side and you can also spread those apart a little bit, just the top and bottom one. You're just gonna have to do this manually to spread these apart. But there you go, that's another little cool, cool gimmick. So aside from the little verniers on the chest that pop out, these ones all on the shoulder also pop out like that, which is really cool. Obviously we got some new parts here down at the legs as well, which are really nicely detailed. They look fantastic. You have this little flap here at the back, which folds out in the little extra thruster bell up inside of there. Your ankle armor is very small, as it just barely fits around the frame in there, basically to fit underneath these big new leg sections. This little flap here on the front will also move like that. The feet are larger, but still basically experiencing the same thing where it's weird. The actual toe piece is a separate piece, but it doesn't really actually move up and down at all. So there doesn't really seem to be too much of a point for that being a separate piece, but it is. Anyway, and then up underneath the feet, lots of really nice detail up underneath there as well too. And once again, there are little clear parts for those little kind of cameras on the top of the shoulders. I haven't put those in yet, just because again, once you get those in, you're not gonna be able to take them out. So just to make my life easier, I'll put those in after the kit is actually painted and all that. Uh, and then just the backpack, of course, you can kind of move the beam sabers around. You can move these bits around up and down, side to side, in and out like that. 
this flap will move up and down a little bit here like that as well too. The main thruster belts up in the center of the backpack, those have a little bit of movement as those are just on ball joints as well too. So you can move some stuff around a little bit. And again, just like with the Zephyranthes, you can open up the doors here on the front of that to open up the cockpit hatch and then you've got basically your canopy of the core fighter up inside there. I mean, just as far as the Gundam goes, aside from the little annoying chest vent and just some maybe not super solid feeling there in the torso section, I mean, it's a really great looking kit. Once again, here, it looks awesome, especially that head. The head just looks so good. Very mean looking face on it and just the details overall. It's got just the right amount of details on it. This is what I love about some of the RG line and not necessarily all of the kits in the RG line, but the amount of details they have on these GPO-1 kits is just the right perfect amount of detail for me. There's a lot there for those of you who do like a lot of details, but it's not super overly complicated with a lot of details everywhere. It's like we're just a really nice amount of this. So it looks great. Color separation also fantastic. That two-tone white that's also just nice and subtle. It's not super in your face. Just a very light, uh, subtle difference there in some parts on the legs and the arms where it's really noticeable. But other than that, it looks fantastic straight out the box. With a little bit of panel lining, uh, I would recommend gray in this case, and some top coat, and it's gonna be looking great. The stickers, eh, they're not, you know, they're RG stickers. They don't look that great. I threw just basically a couple there on the shoulders just so you guys can get the idea. But anytime you're putting those stickers on any parts that are not white, they're not really gonna look very good. As for our accessories, they're gonna be pretty much all entirely the same except for our little standing pilot figure here, which is slightly different. It's just kind of in casual clothes like that instead this time. But we've also got our action base adapter, our RG articulated hands, which again are not great, but you will need these uh, for holding onto the shield, at least the left handed one for holding onto the shield. Those will also be useful for holding onto the beam sabers. Now these are a second set of handles aside from the handles that are on the kit. These ones have a little tab sticking off the side to plug into the hand for added security and we have our long clear pink beam saber effect parts here for those obviously we've got a trigger finger hand here for the right hand specifically basically for holding the beam rifle which again is the same beam rifle looks fantastic there is a clear piece for the lens but I haven't put that in yet there is also this effect part piece here that goes on the underside of that so that looks very cool this front handle will move side to side you also have a little peg here in the side of the handle for plugging into the hand again for extra security the cap is able to be removed here off the back there if you want to and we've got two spares here stored in the back of the shield and then once again you have this handle which is here and then this part will plug into the back of the arm some people mentioned this and I kind of noticed it but I didn't really think it was very noteworthy but the this connection into the back of the arm is a little bit weak to be honest I wouldn't say that it's a huge problem but it was a little bit annoying uh, as that would sometimes pop out of the arm while you're trying to pose the kit but again it's really nice detail here on the back of there and then on the front it's uh, got the, one of the stickers on there but it just looks pretty nice. This one, of course, once again is collapsible. And we do, once again, have the alternate piece for the handle, which is the hand molded together with the handle so that you can hold the shield out in front of the mobile suit without uh, worrying about any weakness of the shield kind of falling out of the pose, or whatever. So that just works like that. This part you need to just move up to the top like that, kind of for storage. And you can have it holding the shield out to the front, which is a very cool look for this. And then, of course, we have our just regular closed fist, which I've got here on the kit already, which look great as well. But here's a look at the two of the kits together. Now, if you were to ask me which one I would recommend you guys to buy, it's a really hard toss up because they're both great, but they're also both very similar. So it's very understandable that you might not want to buy both. That said, they aren't that expensive. These are just going back to the standard RG price of 2,500 yen each. So if you consider that they're both the exact same price, you maybe would feel like you get a little bit more bang for your buck with the full burner version because you have more kind of more built up there on the shoulders, the backpack, and the legs. Uh, so if that's the kind of more full feel you get from that, if that's what you prefer, then maybe go for that. With that said, the Zephyranthes does feel slightly more solid though. So if you're worried about that, uh, then maybe go for that one. But I wouldn't really con concern yourself too much with uh, how solid the kits are because they both seem fine to me. They might be like slightly weak, but I haven't really noticed that much of a problem with it really, to be honest. I've heard a lot about it, but in my personal experience here building and working with these two kits, haven't really been bothered too much by uh, how solid or not they were. So in all honesty, if you're a fan of the series and a fan just of the GP01 in general, I would recommend getting both of these at some point, maybe not necessarily both at the same time, unless you, unless you really wanted to, but you know, get one and then, you know, if you like it, then get the other one later on. Cause I think they're of course very similar, but different enough that I think it's worth having both of them. I really enjoyed building both of them and they're, I think both really great looking kits.
But other than that, I think that's gonna pretty much do it for my review here for this guy. Uh, guys, I really like this kit. I'm really sad, kind of, that it took me so long to get around to building the pair of these, uh, but it, they've definitely been worth the wait. I really enjoy building them. They're really great in terms of just the proportions, the details of them. Really can't recommend them enough. Now, just once again, I, you know, I've heard a lot of people having problems with them, but I haven't noticed anything, so I would say, you know, if you're a fan of the design, Pick one of them up at least, uh, maybe both of them if you're so inclined. But despite these being now seven years old uh, RG kits, I could definitely still recommend them to you guys if you're interested. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have further questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those down below. And of course, if you want to check out these kits or any other Gunpla kits for yourself, you can check out the link to USA Gundam Store that's down below in the video description as well. And you can use my coupon code there, Zakurilius10, to save yourself 10% off everything on the site as well. And just thank you guys all so much for your support, whether it be liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that's also greatly appreciated. So till next time, guys, hope you're all having a great day and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.